All right, guys, today we're gonna to talk about one of the most interesting knives in my collection that you have probably never heard of. And I would imagine the majority of you guys have probably never even seen a knife that looks quite like this. And without any further ado, guys, today we're gonna to be looking at and talking about a little bit of the history briefly on the Emerson Ensar. Now, like I said, this is the knife that you're looking at is the Emerson Ensar. But before we get into this knife, its specifications, its features, its blade material, all the usual stuff, I thought I would talk about um, I thought I would talk about the history of this knife because it's actually a fairly interesting history of this, like how this knife came to be. And of course, with a blade shape that looks like this, it obviously has a very purpose driven um, mindset behind it. So like this knife didn't just come to someone in a dream. This was a very purposeful blade. So essentially the NSAR, before we talk about the NSAR, we have to talk about Emerson's SARC or S-A-R S-A-R-K. And what the all these acronyms stand for is SARC stands for Search and Rescue Knife. And the SARC is basically, it looks just like this. I might throw up an image of it, but essentially the SARC looks just like this knife, minus the seat belt cutter or strap cutter, and minus the serrations. So the SARC basically has the same type of curvature to the blade. It has the same style of handle, all that stuff. But the SARC was originally designed to meet a Navy contract or a Navy request of Emerson to build a knife that their dive uh, professionals could use in the event they need to rescue people who are trapped in webbing, can't breathe, um, and originally it came from a rather tragic situation where the, the Navy was doing a dive um, drill and during that drill there was a significant amount of malfunctions and for whatever reason a quite a few people ended up losing their lives because the knives that the navy had originally issued for um, safety you know like cutting through webbing and stuff had failed catastrophically so once again the navy um, or members of the navy reached out to emerson with a an idea or with a not so much an idea but a like a requirement or a specification that they needed something better for their rescue knives so the sark was that immediate response that emerson had now the sark in and of itself is a great knife it's a great rescue knife uh, and for what it's designed for it's just fine but the nsar is the kind of spiritual successor to the sark and the nsar for what that stands for for those who don't know stands for Navy Search and Rescue. So once again, it was designed to meet the Navy's requirement for a search and rescue, um, ultimately a dive blade that could be used specifically for rescue operations. Now there are other component or there are other competitors to these. Um, the salt line in many of the automatic rescue knives that Spyderco makes are also very much used by similar um, people or similar forces, but the, so the NSAR is also one of those competitors. So now let's talk about the NSAR. Now, like I said, this is essentially the spiritual successor, and so it borrows very heavily on many of the pros of the Sark. And so it uses the same exact handle, um, the same exact, you know, like general blade shape. The only difference is that the NSAR has is that once again, they did opt for serrations towards the lower section of the blade or more towards the handle. And they also opted for a webbing seat belt type cutter. And I will say, while I'm not usually a fan of either of these two things on a knife, this is a very purpose driven rescue tool. So this is not necessarily like it is technically a knife, but this is not necessarily your run of the mill type of EDC blade. This has a very specific application to EMS, EMTs, of course, rescue, search and rescue uh, squads and different people. So as a whole, this thing is not designed for your average, you know, cutting open a bag of chips. Like, will it do that? Sure, this can probably cut up cut open a bag of chips, but at the same time too, this is not what you're really wanting to use to open Amazon packages and it's not really designed for that at all. So in addition to the serrations and the 
seat belt cutter or webbing cutter. It also has a heavily blunted tip, as you guys can see there. And once again, this is specifically designed so that if you do have to press this up against someone's skin to cut clothing off, to cut other items off, this is going to um, not obviously penetrate or cut anything that you don't want it to. So this is entirely blunt here. There is absolutely no edge and it's pretty darn, um, comes down to a pretty darn dull tip. So that is ultimately what you want. Once again, this is a rescue knife, so it is not designed to penetrate at all. In addition to something I really like about the curvature of this knife and from my background, my experience, I really do like this knife in a number of ways. The biggest thing I like about the curvature of this blade or the blade shape as a whole, like the blade shape as a whole is what attracted me initially. And I like it for two reasons. One, if you do have to press this up against someone's skin, it's not optimal to cut people's clothing off in any environment, especially with a knife. But if you need a knife to do that, I think the NSAR is one of the better or even the Sark because it has the same blade shape because two reasons. One, obviously this is heavily blunted so it's not going to pose a risk of cutting people. In addition to it is curved. I see most rescue knives such as the Benchmade Triage have a very straight blade and what I like about this curved blade is not only is this more natural if you're laying this against someone's skin to make a cut but in addition if you do lean it back like this what it gives you or what that curved um, blade shape gives you is the ability to see the tip easily. And so once again, you don't necessarily have to worry about the tip of this blade penetrating anything, but at the same time too, if you are specifically not trying to penetrate things or try to run into open skin, the nice thing is you can put the tip of this blade up and therefore you can visualize it. Even if you can't necessarily see it exactly, it will make an imprint through clothing and you can visualize that tip, making it not only better and easier to use from an ergonomic standpoint, but safer. So that is what I like about the curvature of this tip. Now, other things that, like I said, I don't normally like on knives, things like serrations. I'm not a huge fan of serrations normally, but given this knife's general, you know, use application where it is specifically designed to cut through textiles, fabrics, and webbing, Undoubtedly, things like serrations do a really good job at cutting through those materials. That's just a reality. Also too, I really love the way that this webbing um, hook was made. This is, I think, ultimately something that like, if a knife company is making a rescue blade, they should be taking notes from Emerson for a few reasons. One, this is really quite safe. It is very hard. They have recessed this and far enough into the blade stock that it is not easy to get things like fingers, even small fingers, into this area. Meaning that this hook is going to cut specifically what you want it to and nothing else. In addition to, they have also deeply ground this. As you guys can see, not only is it a bit of a mirror polish, but it is very deeply ground. Oftentimes when you see things like gut hook, and stuff they're very short they're very abrupt and when you have that oftentimes that edge realistically isn't that sharp like it might be sharp enough to do some tasks but if we're talking gliding through something like webbing this is going to do it very well because it has a nice long grind to it and so you have a nice tapered edge in addition to while it doesn't look the prettiest you can see that emerson went to the back side of this and actually sharpened this area so that it comes to a true cutting edge like this is genuinely very very sharp like this is every bit as sharp as the actual cutting edge and I really do like that I have tested out on a few things just to see just how sharp it is and genuinely it cuts just as well as a knife blade would and that is something that you honestly like that may not sound like a huge deal but you genuinely don't see that a lot or very frequently with integral rescue hooks or safety hooks or gut hooks so I do really like the way that they did this it was well executed and honestly it does just fine all right so lastly but not least that the, the last thing that i really like about this 
well, I guess there's a couple things more I should say. One, I do like that they included the wave feature on this blade. It is very prominent, very easy to use. And while it may not always be the most practical thing, it is very nice to know that you can rapidly deploy this with one hand. Obviously that is sometimes a little bit gimmicky, but it is very nice to have that ability in case you need it. So that is one feature that I like. Uh, a lot and then the last one for me that I really like is the handle size and the overall way that the handle is designed. It is very very grippy, very textured and I feel like I can get a really confident grip on this blade both in forward and reverse and I think it's nice to or important to know at least uh, about reverse grip because you do have this hook here that you may have to you know reverse grip the blade and hold it in its opposed manner to use that hook so anyways it is nice the grip is very very um, comfortable and allows for a wide variety of different carry or sorry different holds the handle is very nice and it does allow for multiple different types of hold um, in addition last thing is and i'm not sure if this is because my other emersons are just older this is one of my first newer emersons so like this is a, a newer designed or newer um, Emerson as opposed to like my 2009 and 2012 I want to say Emerson's and that is that the G10 on this is very very grippy the pattern is the same from the older uh, Emerson's but this is genuinely like abrasive like this feels like a sandpaper and once again that's probably something I wouldn't love on an EDC knife but for a rescue knife like this it definitely is appreciated so it has very very rough textured G10 and you can feel it when you hold the knife um, anyways that is essentially all that I have to say about the Emerson Ensar this is a really cool blade it's very wacky I showed it off on my Instagram and a lot of people were wondering what the heck this thing is and a lot of people wondered why I bought it in particular once again given my medical background I definitely appreciate really solid um, EMS EMT styled blades because they knives like this are really useful for th my given applications so once again it's not so much a edc knife for me but for given applications i do really like having things like this obviously i have a leatherman raptor as well and so for th these types of blades and these types of um, tools i really do like having them in the collection um, for specific use applications anyways guys Hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.